Hi, this is Bonnie from Fairy Stamper, and today I'm going to be using a jelly uh, plate, and this was a 5x7, and then there is a small, very thin, and I haven't been able to get this one to really work well yet, but I'm going to still give it a try in this video, a little oval one from um, Nellie Snellen, and it is also in the Fairy Stamper store. Both of these um, are in the Fairy Stamper store. Um, I'm trying to do, I'm do, do something a little bit different um, than the normal jelly plate. I am going to be using a die, and this is a 2D Designs die. It's oval heart frame, and um, this is also in the Fairy Stamper store. And I'm going to be using some Upo paper, which is also in the Fairy Stamper store. So what I did was um, I, I tried to find a die that had some details in it that I thought that I could use as a stencil. And the reason I'm using Upo paper is because it is a form of a plastic type paper. So it takes the water and, uh, and it actually um, worked really well for the first sample that I did. Um, it worked pretty well. So I went ahead and cut it out of Upo paper. Here's the deal. When you go to die cut it, you're gonna to wanna to pass it through your die machine a couple of times um, before you lift it up to make sure that it cuts through well. Um, it's really not that big of a deal, but I just had to do it like three times to make sure I got all the pieces because there's more pieces. The other thing that I'm gonna be using is a Fairy Hugs uh, stamp. This one is called a uh, Fairy Poem. It's um, new in the shop and it will work even though I am going to be using it on the gel press. That means the words will be reversed. Um, that's why they typically tell you not to use words, but this type of a poem was made in a way, I think I even got that, yeah, upside down, just to tell you, that it was made in a way so that it just looked like script and not so much words. It definitely is words if you look at it, but for what I'm gonna be using it for today, it's not gonna matter. The other thing you're gonna be needing is some acrylic paints. And from what I found, and a speed ball roller. And what I found with the paints is that uh, the thicker that they are, uh, the better it works for what I'm gonna be doing. Um, I am still gonna be using a distressed paint. Um, it was also in the shop. It's called Speckled um, Egg. But the rest of these are just something I had on my stash and I'll just let you know the colors of them or you can probably see. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. And what basically is, it's a lot of drying time in between. You really, if you're gonna be doing layers, you're not just gonna be doing one pull, um, there's drying time in between. That's the longest part of this whole process. So um, the first thing I'm gonna do is gonna go ahead and add some of the um, speckled egg. Now it does um, bubble up a little bit on here, and that's not um, how I was trying to tell you you really need the thick paint, but I liked um, the little bit of sheen that this had. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and add some of this to my first layer. And <clears throat> then I'm gonna also add some of, it's kind of like a, um, it's not really a fuchsia because it's lighter than a fuchsia. Um, it's like a purpley, I don't know. It's really hard for me to tell you. On here, it basically, so I wanted to see if it had the, yeah, it actually says light fuchsia. So that's what this is. Make sure I get some of that out. You don't need a t you don't need a lot because for the most part, what you end up doing is taking a lot of the ink or paint rather, not ink, a lot of the paint back off to start. Now this one um, I've had for a while, which is why it's got that little piece instead of it being fluid like it should be. But it's thicker, which is what I needed, even though I've had it for a while. It is a bit thick. I'm gonna go ahead and try that much. Um, and you can just, I, and the reason I'm wanting the pink in the center is I showed you how that, um, the dye that I used had the heart. And so I'm going to go ahead and do it this way. Now what they tell you usually is your first, 
uh, bit that you put on, you want to go ahead and, t and lift a little bit of the paint off, or you keep rolling your brayer to get some of the paint off. But because I'm using the distressed ink, it doesn't lift exactly like I would like it to. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use a paper, and I'll be able to keep using this for as I am lifting paint off. Because I don't want a lot on left. But you can see it does make a really pretty pull. So I've got a little bit left on there. As you can see, well, it's hard to see it, but I do have a little bit more than just the pink. But I am going to add a little bit more pink to this, actually. I know I want more in the middle. And like I said, this one's, because it's older, it's, there we go, I think it's coming out. Giving me more of a tough time. There we go, got it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and, like I said, add some more of that to the center. Okay. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of blue around it. And this is a cobalt blue. I don't need a lot. And as you can see, this one's a little bit more fluid. It is gonna mix with that paint if I don't do some a little bit of lifting. I'm just gonna take a paper towel this time and lift that up. And it does leave a little bit of a design already. My paper towel, your paper towels do leave designs. Okay. So I do want a little bit more pink in that center. And then I'm gonna basically, um, I'm gonna let this dry. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit on this um, small oval one, too. There we go. Okay, that's going to mix a little bit with this blue. Oh, and I'm taking a little bit of that off now, too, but that's okay. So Every time I do something, it's different, but it still works. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave that just like that. I am gonna put a little bit on this um, oval one. Like I still have the blue on here. And I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna let those dry. And when I come back, I'm gonna add the um, dye to the top of this and then add a little bit more texture. All right, after looking at this a little bit, I decided I wanted to add just a little bit more pink to the center. And that's basically like I told you because of the dye that I'm using, I do want it to be, um, I'm gonna show you, I do want more pink in the center of that. So and that's what's gonna end up showing. Um, it, I don't know how to explain this to you. It kind of like layers, um, your, the first layers you put are basically what ends up showing up at, at the top or at the end, um, it'll make sense once you see me totally finish that. Of course, what did I do? I went and washed my brayer. So I've got a smaller brayer. We'll go ahead and use that. Because I just want the center anyway. And I am going to still take some of that back off because it's going to be too much. But I know I want it basically in this center area. And 
And I'm still going to use my paper towel just to ever so lightly to pull that up. There we go. That's what I want. I want a little bit more, like I said, in the center. I'm gonna be adding more as I go, so that works. Okay, so that did not take very long, just a little bit, and I'm sure it'll make a difference on the humidity, um, wherever you're at, how long it will take. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of this, it's an antique gold, and again, a, a little bit. Um, I'm gonna take that off. I don't need a lot, but this is the part where I'm gonna um, be putting um, my stencil on. So I am gonna mix this just a little bit, the pink with the gold. That is if I can get any of the pink out. There it goes. That's going to be plenty. Okay, so I think I'm going to use my small brayer, my teeny tiny one. just to make a pass over that. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and put my stencil on and I'm gonna put that stencil right in the center. And I'm gonna use that paper towel again to start and take some to press that down. This is like the third time I've used a stencil, so that just tells you that the UPO paper does a really good job. And like I said, I'm taking some of the ink away from the cutout areas. If you can see how I'm doing that. And a little bit in the heart. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be, while it's doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and use my um, stamp because it's a little bit wet there, and I'm gonna be lifting that off as well. It is hard to see, but once I go to um, put the next layer on, you'll be able to see it after it gets lifted. It makes a really nice texture. And make sure you get your um, stamps cleaned off right away. Okay, I think I'm gonna go ahead and do some in the middle of the heart too. There we go. Okay, so that needs to set. I am gonna go ahead and um, do some of the lettering in the little oval here. I think it needs to be a little bit more wet. It's dried up too quickly. 
Okay. Let's try it now. It's taken it. Not as much as I would like it to because it's probably not wet enough. It really needs to be a little bit more wet. So I'm going to put a little bit more gold because without, um, it has to have, I don't know how to, it has to have a little bit of wet in order to pull up what's underneath. And that's probably going to be way too much gold. Which is good for you to watch because you can see what I'm saying. When I put too much of something on, then you will understand not to do that yourself. Okay. I'm going to give it a try. That's better. I'm going to try another stamp with this too. See if I can get a little bit more. This is the um, Skinny Bear Tree from um, Fairy Hugs. And it's the short one. And I'll have um, in the description below, I'll have all the links to what I've used from the Fairy Stamp Store. Yeah, that took off some. That's kind of cool. We'll put it right there. Okay, so I need to get this stuff all cleaned off and I'll be back. Okay, so it's going to be the last layer. And um, before I do the last layer, I'm going to be um, picking this off. So you can see what happens when you do that. Okay, I know I've got a little bit of a shine up above that it's getting a little bit overcast outside, so I had to turn my overhead light on. And then I'm just going to be using an acrylic um, paint. This is ivory white. And this is all dry, except for what I just, I wanted the, um, the reason I left the you put paper on in the um, stencil was to keep it wet. So now I'm just going to go ahead and put this on the top. A very light layer. And I think I'm probably going to have more than what I need. As usual, this is when you first start, you really get, you have to get used to how much you really need. And you really don't need a lot. In fact, this. I've watched several different videos and one of them says you don't want to have too much on this last layer. Um, you want to be able to sort of see what's underneath it. And again, the paint really does make a difference. Okay, so that should be ready for me to make a, to lift that now. And I don't wait for it to dry this time because it helps to lift the paper. Another one of the um, um, YouTube videos that I did watch, she said she waited long enough for this to cool off a little bit. I have um, not noticed a big difference between that, but I'm gonna go ahead and let that sit just for a little bit. And while that's on there, I'm gonna go ahead and put some of the paint on the small one. The small one is where I usually have my biggest problems. I do not know why. I think I'm gonna add a little bit to that. And then while this one, while this one is sitting here a minute, add a little bit more here. And then I've got a little piece of paper for that too. There it is. Okay. But if you leave it sit on too long, the paper actually sticks um, 
to your um, jelly plate. So there, it's definitely um, a certain time frame to pull that off. And you can take a peek and see how it goes. And right now it's working fine. So as you can see, that's how it's supposed to work. And that's what we get for our pole. It's really pretty. And then I'm gonna use this for a background um, and stamp. And I'll show you that too. But I just wanted you to see how you can make something just using the UPO paper as your um, stencil. And you can make anything out of the UPO paper. You don't even have to use a die. I've seen people also use a wood burning tool um, on YouTube, but this was the easiest thing. It's something I already had that I could do, but it's it, it's really pretty. And if you can see, it's a really pretty background. Now let's see if for the first time I can get this one to work. Yeah, it just doesn't, I've not been successful with this one at all. It has not wanted to, I mean, you can see on this side, it should really work. But for whatever reason, I've not been able to get a decent pull off of this at all. So that does not work. And that just goes to show you that you can do some things that work great in the jelly plate. And when you go to try to do something on something else, it might not work. So it's, it's a matter of, of trial and error to try to figure it out. And I'm going to still try to see if I can figure out how to get this off by adding more paint. But... Um, because I'm determined to see if I can get that to work. So that's just to let you know how you can do things. And then I, um, I said I'm going to go ahead and, and figure out some stamping for this. Okay, so I wanted to show you quickly what I am going to do in terms of simple stamping. I, I'm going to add some more to it. But just to give you an idea of how you can use the paper once you make it with the... Um, the gel plate. So I am, uh, I always audition, if you want to call it that, my stamps to see where I would like to put them. And this one happens to be um, to, uh, Fairy Hugs Takara. And it also um, can work with um, um, Fairy Hugs Flam Flamo, F L A M O. And so, like I said, I always audition how I want to put the stamps. On what I'm going to be making so that was one selection I'm also because um, I, I always make a sample sometimes before I start so I'm also going to be using Sienna because I think she would also make a really pretty um, this could even be a journal cover or um, a card whatever you want to do it works really well so I'm going to go ahead and just show you how um, this um, stamps up I already have Takara set up on here ready to go because I even questioned how the paint adheres to the paper and then if you're going to go stamping on top of it. So I made sure that my pad was really um, juicy so that it would adhere well. So I'm just going to go ahead and get that stamped on. I'm sorry about that overhead. It's dark. It was dark a little bit. Um, Ago we had some rain, but I think it's starting to lighten up, so I might be able to turn that light off. Let's just see how that worked. Yeah, I'm gonna have to double stamp her because of what I because it's on top of the paint. And I'm still gonna um heat emboss or I'm gonna put um clear embossing powder on her and heat embosser as well. But I think she can, I think that looks pretty good, but I'm gonna do it one more time. Then I'll go ahead and do Flamo, but I think I'm going to go ahead and turn my overhead light off so we don't have more reflection. Here we go. That looks better. Much better. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and take her off a second and put him on. I'm going to 
to see about where I want him to go. Make sure this stays down for me so it doesn't move. And I got some black ink. And I don't need that black ink. See that it needs a little bit more. I always feel like I'm in such a big hurry when I go to do these videos, but you really sometimes just need to take your time and get the ink and stuff on there right. So I'm gonna go ahead and heat and boss that. And um, I think what I'm going to do is just show you at the beginning when you um, start watching the film or the video, um, you'll see how I um, finished off my cards. So um, I just want to say thank you so much for stopping by. And um, if you haven't already subscribed, if you please could subscribe and like this video, that would be great. Thanks so much.